Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Uh, our next presentation is titled, The Apology Breakthrough, Now What? And it will be presented by the Honorable Phil Fan Fontaine, Saguin First Nation, and the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations in Canada, uh, Chief Fontaine. I'm going to be uh, supported here by Elder uh, Fred Kelly, Anishinaabe from Honingaming, Ontario. I want to thank you for inviting us to be here today. Let me especially thank Director Kevin Gover for asking me to share a Canadian First Nations perspective on healing, truth, and reconciliation. I'm here to talk about an important and painful part of Canada's past. For more than 100 years, First Nations children were taken from their homes, their families, and their communities to attend church-run, government-funded residential schools. The primary purpose of these schools was not education. In the words of the Canadian government, the schools were set up to solve Canada's Indian problem. The schools were meant to assimilate children by removing them from their families, culture, and community, or as the government of the day stated, to kill the Indian within the child. One government official predicted in 1928 that Canada would end its Indian problem within two generations. Assimilation broke apart families and personally devastated those who lost their languages and culture. The schools tried to take away their, their identity, who they were, as people. Many young children were also subjected to physical, sexual, and emotional abuse at the hands of those who were entrusted to care for them. I think it's important to say that while this system started a long time ago, it is not ancient history. We have, in some cases, three generations or more where families survive the residential school system. Some are elders and grandparents, some are parents with young children. In too many families, children are being raised by their own parents for the first time in generations. Since 1996, we have received apologies from many of the churches who operated residential schools. But a missing piece was an apology from Canada for their role in designing, funding, and promoting this policy. I have brought with me today a presentation that shows some of the history of the residential school system. It also shows, perhaps more importantly, the historic apology received, we received on June 11, 2008, from all members of Canada's Parliament. On that day, leaders from each of Canada's four national political parties expressed a desire for reconciliation, a desire to build a new relationship with our people, a relationship built on common respect. I hope that as you watch, you will have a sense of how survivors felt as they listened in the House of Commons or outside Parliament Hill. It is actually more dramatic than that. <laughs>
Indian residential schools is a sad chapter in our history. The 1870s, the federal government, partly in order to meet its obligations to educate Aboriginal children, began to play a role in the development and administration of these schools. Two primary objectives of the residential school system were to remove and isolate children from the influence of their home families, traditions, and cultures, and to assimilate them into the dominant culture. These objectives were based on the assumption that Aboriginal cultures and spiritual beliefs were inferior and unequal. Indeed, some saw it, as was infamously said, to kill the Indian in the child. Today, we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm, and has no place in our country. The Government of Canada sincerely apologizes and asks the forgiveness of the Aboriginal peoples of this country for failing them so profoundly. We are complicit in the mental, physical and sexual abuse of thousands of Aboriginal children through the residential school system. As the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, the party that was in government for more than 70 years in the 20th century. I acknowledge our role and our shared responsibility in this tragedy. I am deeply sorry. I apologize. It is about being inspired by the determination of survivors like National Chief Phil Fontaine and Billy Blackwater, who had the courage to speak out and pursue justice. It is about building on the work of former First Nations Member of Parliament, Karen Rusty, whose motion calling on the government to apologize to survivors of residential schools was unanimously adopted by Members of Parliament on May 1, 2007. Today, the South Sector Council of Persons Quatre-vingt-dix mille sont toujours vivants. En fait, 
Ces 90 000 personnes sont des survivantes, c'est des survivants. Il y a déjà plus de 100 ans, le rapport Bright révélait un taux de mortalité de près de 25 dans ces pensionnats. Ce taux atteignait même 47 dans le pensionnat Old Sons de l'Alberta. Voilà pourquoi je dis que les anciens élèves sont des survivants. Ces 150 000 personnes ont été enlevées des bras de leur mère et de leur père. Ils ont été séparés de leurs sœurs et frères. Ils ont été arrachés de force à leur communauté et à leur culture traditionnelle. Pour ceux et celles qui ne peuvent s'imaginer les impacts que les pensionnats ont eus sur les peuples autochtones, ayez une image en tête. Pensez à un petit village, une petite communauté duquel on retire les enfants, tous les enfants. Dès lors, il n'y a plus d'enfants entre 7 et 16 ans qui jouent dans les rues ou dans les forêts, inondant de leur rire et de leur joie le cœur des plus vieux. De plus, il y a cette crainte toujours présente de voir les enfants disparaître dès qu'ils atteignent l'âge scolaire. It was enacted 151 years ago racist legislation that established the residential school. This parliament chose to treat First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people as not equally human. It set out to kill the Indian in the child. That choice was wrong, horribly wrong. It led to incredible suffering. Denied First Nations, Métis, and Inuit the basic freedom to choose how to live their lives. For those wrongs that we have committed, we are truly sorry. Prime Minister, Chief Justice, members of this house, elders, survivors, Canadians. For our parents, our grandparents, great-grandparents, Indeed, for all of the generations that, which have preceded us, this day testifies to nothing less than the achievement of the impossible. This morning, our elders held a condolence ceremony for those who never heard an apology, never received compensation, yet courageously fought assimilation so that we could witness this day. Together, we remember and honor them. For it was they who suffered the most as they witnessed generation after generation of their children taken from their families' love and guidance. For the generations that will follow us, we bear witness today in this house that our survival as First Nations peoples in this land is affirmed forever. Therefore, the significance of this day is not just about what has been, but equally important, what is to come. Never again will this House consider us the Indian problem, just for being who we are. We heard the Government of Canada take full responsibility for this dreadful chapter in our shared history. We heard the Prime Minister declare that this will never happen again. Finally, we heard Canada say, it is sorry. Brave survivors, through the telling of their painful stories, have stripped white supremacy of its authority and legitimacy. The, irresist the irresistibility of speaking truth to power is real. Today is not the result of a political game, 
Instead, it is something that shows the righteousness and importance of our struggle. We know we have many difficult issues to handle. There are many fights still to be fought. What happened today signifies a new dawn in the relationship between us and the rest of Canada. We are, and always have been, an indispensable part of the Canadian identity. the character of this nation. We must not falter in our duty now. Emboldened by the spectacle of history, the spectacle of history, it is possible to end our racial nightmare together. The memories of residential schools sometimes cut like merciless knives at our souls. This day will help us to put that pain behind us. But it sig signifies something even more important, a respectful and therefore liberating relationship between us and the rest of Canada. Together, we can achieve the greatness our country deserves. The apology today is founded upon, more than anything else, the recognition that we all own our own lives and destinies, the only true foundation for a society where peoples can flourish. We must now capture a new spirit and vision to meet the challenges of the future. As a great statesman once said, we are all part of one garment of destiny. The differences between us are not blood or color, and the ties that bind us are deeper than those that separate us. The common road of hope will bring us to reconciliation more than any words, laws, or legal claims ever could. We still have to struggle, but now we are in this together. I reach out to all Canadians. I reach out to all Canadians today in the spirit of reconciliation. Miigwech. I think you can see in that presentation how profoundly survivors were moved on this historic day. No policy so profoundly impacted our people as did the residential school policy. In his apology, Prime Minister Harper stated, and I quote, the government recognizes that the absence of an apology has been an impediment to healing and reconciliation. I perceive the apology as a promise from Canada to right the wrongs of our stolen generations of language, culture, and identity. It signals for us a new beginning, a new era that will restore the mutual respect our people once had for each other. But an, but an apology must be more than symbolic. Our work is not done. The residential school system left serious gaps between First Nations and Canadians in education, poverty, and the health and well-being of our people. This legacy is not only our burden, it is the burden of all Canadians. Today, many First Nations children still suffer from the effects of the residential school experience. 
And let me give you an example. Today, in Canada, one of the richest nations in the world, there are more than 27,000 First Nations children in state care. That is more children than at, that were in residential school at the height of the residential school experience, three times the, the number. The primary reason children are in state care is neglect due to poverty, not a lack of parental love. We believe there is also a relationship between the way residential schools broke families and the number of children in state care. This is another national tragedy. Reconciliation must mean giving families who need help the support they need to become strong again. It must mean undoing the mistakes of the past and allowing our communities to become strong again. Reconciliation must restore our original relationship with Canada, a partnership based on mutual recognition and respect. The residential school's experiment was an insult and an injury to this relationship. Reconciliation must repair this relationship by ending the policies that have created gaps in poverty, education, and the health of our people. Reconciliation means taking back control of our lives and our nations and taking back the future for our young people. While the apology was a positive first, we have much work to do to ensure that the words spoken create a meaningful and positive transformative change. We must continue to work with the government to ensure that the health, education, languages and cultures of our peoples are restored. In the spirit of healing, I continue to be hopeful and determined. This does not mean we simply forgive and forget. We must never forget. We will always remember the schools. All Canadians must remember these schools. But the experience must be remembered for what they were, a dark period in our history that we must learn from. But we can and must move forward. We can move forward in a manner that provides for healing, justice, and reconciliation. Truth is important, not only for the survivors, but to help all Canadians understand how deeply assimilation policies affected our people, the causes and extent of abuse we suffered, and the effects that continue to reverberate throughout our communities. One component of a, of a holistic response to the residential school experience is a Truth and Reconciliation Commission on these schools. In my opinion, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is the most important element of the, of the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement. June 1, 2008, the Canadian Truth and Reconciliation Commission officially began its important work. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission will provide the opportunity for former students to share their stories and to educate Canadians about the residential school system and to establish a permanent record of their experiences. In fact, every experience is unique to this uh, story. And all of these unique experiences must be incorporated in this chapter that we are about to write, the missing chapter in Canadian history. This will be important to the healing of our families and communities, and to the healing of our relationship with Canada. It's part of an effort, as I said, to write the missing chapter in Canadian history, a chapter that was written by Canada, but too few Canadians knew or about or truly understand. That's really where the importance lies in a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, in having history accurately told and recorded. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission is not set up as a court, but to embrace our traditional forms of justice, giving everyone an opportunity to speak as equals, and most importantly, to be heard. With knowledge comes power, the power to change and to progress. For survivors, these are also personal my milestones that have been decades in the making. We must strive for healing. We owe that to ourselves, to the survivors no longer with us, and to the generations that will follow. Thus, we can go full circle and further can move for forward in a way that rejects the government knows best way of dealing with our people, to a way we interact as equals and where our people make their own decisions and create their own futures. Miigwech. Thank you.